Hello, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, hope you had a Merry Christmas yesterday. I, I know we sure did. Yes, we did. And I tell you what, we enjoy the Christmas season. And hey, we're coming to you today from, from our house. And and uh, I've got our Christmas tree back behind us. And we've enjoyed that tree, haven't we? Yes, we have. You know, we, we enjoy it. You know, we put that up every year. You know, we have some traditions. And we put the tree up and decorate the uh, the day after Thanksgiving. And we've done that for years, haven't we? Yes, we. that's a tradition that we have. We always put up the tree after the day after Thanksgiving. Yeah, and we, we start in the morning. We work till around noon. And then we have we eat the leftovers from Thanksgiving. <laughs> we really enjoy that. Absolutely. And then and then we uh, then we finish putting up the tree. Yes. And as we've gotten a little older, we have to finish the next day, <laughs> haven't we? It goes a little bit slower. <laughs> you know, we have some other traditions, too. I know... Uh, one Saturday in December, uh, we all we all get together, the ladies and the family and and our grandson, and we make cookies. We make tons and tons of Christmas cookies, and then everybody can take lots of cookies home with them. It's quite a wonderful day. Absolutely, and then we drive we around and look drive at the lights. Around. We like to drive around and look at the lights at different people's houses, how well they've decorated, and, and look at all the light displays. And then we have a couple of movies that we always watch. Every single Christmas we watch It's a Wonderful Life. Absolutely. We always like that one. And then we have another one that we watch, and it's a Christmas carol, but it's not the regular Christmas carol that you would think of. It's the best one that they've ever made. It was, I think, <laughs> 1970 it came out. And it was a musical, and it's titled Scrooge. The best. Absolutely. The best. There's nothing else even close. And right. that, that is the greatest Christmas carol rendition that's ever been made. If you haven't seen it, it's called Scrooge from, I think, 1970. And Albert Finney, is the, he plays Scrooge. It mm -hmm. is Fantastic. absolutely great. It, it, once you see that, you won't want to watch any other versions of it. I that's tell you for what. sure. Anyway, so hey, we want to share our hearts with you a little bit, some things the Lord has just laid on our hearts to talk about. And so uh, uh, Diane's going to read uh, some verses to, to start us off here. I'm going to read Luke uh, 2, verse 8 through 11. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be for all the people, to all the people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. God made the birth of Jesus known to a lowly group of people, the shepherds. Jesus came for the lowly shepherds. And so today we're going to look at a lot of people that Jesus came for, the types of people that Jesus came for. Absolutely. And you know, uh, he came, you know, he came for the, the mighty and for the rich, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, before we talk about the mighty and the rich, you know, he came for those shepherds. Absolutely. Remember, I mean, I mean, the angels appeared to the shepherds out in the fields. And uh, you think about that, that of all the people the Lord could have appeared to or, you know, had the angels appeared to, uh, uh, all the high and mighty people. He didn't choose any of them. He, nope. he uh, had the angels appear to the shepherds out in the field, and they were really the first ones that got the announcement of, you know, of Christ actually being born in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. And so, so Jesus came for the lowly, and 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 I think of the shepherds. They were very lowly people yes, in that in that society. But not only did did the Lord come for the lowly, but as I said a moment ago, He came for the mighty and for the rich. Uh, like the wise men, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they were known as magi or kings, and 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 God revealed the birth of of Christ to them in in the star, and uh, so so uh, he came for for the 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 rich wise men or kings. I assume they had a lot of money because they made that long trip with yes. a caravan, and so and we well, you know they must have had a lot of money because they brought Jesus some really expensive gifts. Yes, but but the money's not the issue. It's that the Lord came for. For the the lowly and 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 meek, he came for the the, the poor, you know, and, and some other rich people that we're thinking about, like the rich young ruler, mm -hmm. he came for the rich young ruler, and Jesus, the Bible said, loved him, and and then soldiers, you know, yes. the centurion came to Jesus, and mm -hmm. Jesus ministered to him and and, and others, and and so the, the point is that the Lord came for not only the 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 lowly, but for the for the rich, he came for the well the fishermen. 
you know, the uh, the Lord's disciples were fishermen, and and he had uh, lowly, humble people on his staff. Yes. You know, and and uh, and, and he he came he came for the educated. You know, mm -hmm. I think of Saul of Tarsus that God you know used. He became the apostle Paul, and and the Lord came for him, and and of course for the uneducated. You know, and and his disciples were. Uh, considered to be, you know, you know, uneducated men. They were educated in fishing, but uneducated, you know, as the world would look at it. And so, uh, so the first group of people that the Lord, that we want to let you know the Lord came for is he came for the, the, the lowly and the meek, but he also came to minister to the rich and the mighty. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. One scripture that really stands out to us when we think about who Jesus came for is Luke 4.18. And Jesus is talking, and he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. So right there we see, he, you know, the scripture says he came for the poor. He came for the, for the brokenhearted. If you're out there today and you're brokenhearted, hey, the Lord came for you. Yes. If you're out there and you don't have a lot of money, hey, the Lord loves you just as much as he loves rich people. He came for you just as much as he came for anybody else. Yes. Uh, the brokenhearted, the captives, you know, if you feel captive by something, you know, if you feel something has you bound, hey, the Lord came for you to set you free. Mm -hmm. He came for the blind. I think of Bartimaeus, you know, yes. that, that blind beggar, you know, Jesus uh, stopped right in his tracks mm -hmm. and, and turned and ministered to Bartimaeus as though he was the only one in the crowd. And so uh, uh, he, Jesus, he just came for everybody, didn't yes, he? Yes, and he also said that he uh, came to set at liberty those who are oppressed. And you know, there's a lot of oppressed people mm -hmm. and depressed people, and particularly at the holidays, people yes. really, you know, uh, have that, that, that they have to deal with depression and mm -hmm. oppression. But the Lord came for you. Yes. If you're out there and you're depressed or oppressed, just know the Lord came for you. And I, I like what the Amplified Classic says mm -hmm. here about oppressed, that the Lord came for the oppressed, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. That means to set them free. Yes. And those who are downtrodden, a lot of downtrodden people. Mm -hmm. The Lord came to set you free. And yes. those who are bruised, crushed, uh, broken down by calamity. Now think about that. There's yes. a lot of people that are bruised and crushed and they've had calamities in their in their lives. Yes. And One lots... thing happening after another and, and just kind of crushes them and beats them down. Jesus came for you. And you know, we've seen in pastoring for almost three decades, a lot of times, you know, it's bad enough when one thing bad happens to mm -hmm. somebody, but then when it's like the pile-on effect yes. and so they get bad news here and then bad news there and then something else goes wrong. And, right. And, uh, and we've even, we've had that happen to us over the years yes. at times. And mm -hmm. that's, that's not a fun place oh, to be. Not. And, but the good news is, is the Lord came to set at liberty everybody who's been oppressed, yes. who is oppressed, downtrodden, bruised, crushed, or broken by calamity. That's good. I'm that's, glad he came. That's good you? news. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and so he came for, as we said, to rich, he came for the poor. He came for all these people we just talked about. And he, and then we have in our notes here, he came for the tax collectors. <laughs> you know, he came you, for tax you, collectors. You know, when you talk about the rich people, you got to have somebody to get, to get the money out of those rich people. So that's where the tax collectors yes. come in. But, but, but he came for uh, uh, he came for the tax collectors. In fact, Matthew uh, was was on Jesus's staff, one of the twelve disciples. He was a tax collector, and back in those days, tax collectors were kind of like our mafia is these days. Oh yeah, they were they were just. Ruthless. Well, and I don't, I don't, well, I don't know, are they any better today? I don't know, I guess, I don't know, let's move on. But I will say something good about the IRS, that that they were able to get Mary and Joseph into Bethlehem mm -hmm. because of that taxation that, that was going on there, right. you know, that, that census. And, and so the IRS uh, got, uh, uh, I was talking with, with our tax accountant years ago, and he, he brought that up to me. He said, well, one good thing the IRS has done is they got... They got uh, Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem. <laughs> so if nothing else, they've done that. So mm -hmm. so we so Jesus even came for the tax collectors. That's he right. sure did. He loves them just as much. He as, sure does. And, and you know what? If if you do everything right, you don't have to be afraid of them, right? That's right. All right. And then hey, so and speaking of tax collectors, I'm trying to be humorous here, but Jesus came for thieves. Yes. You know, he came for thieves, and and even though stealing is sinful, Jesus came for thieves. Mm -hmm. And think about the thief on the cross. Yes. You know, he came for, he, he died 
for that thief, you know, there were thief on either side, but the one repented and, mm -hmm. and, and he said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he said, to, Lord said to him today, you'll be with me in paradise. Yes. So the Lord came for thieves. Yes. Just as much as honest people. Right. And, and the thief on the cross was on death row. Absolutely. So Jesus came for all the people that are on death row. And you know, by going out on social media, you don't know there could be somebody on death row. Mm -hmm. You don't know. Could be listening to this. That's right. It's very possible. That's why you need to hit those share buttons. You never know where these messages go. They they go all the way around the world. Yes. And so maybe if you're on death row out there, I tell you what, Jesus came for you. Yes, he did. And, and hey, maybe you've been diagnosed with a terminal disease. And so you may not be in prison, but you're on death row, so to speak. Hey, Jesus came to set you free you know, give, give your heart to him and, and then trust him. He heal your body, you know? Yes. Amen. Amen. All right. So glory Jesus to God. also came for religious people, people that, um, their religion was more important to them than a relationship with God. They were tied up with rules and regulations. Uh -huh. uh, the power of God was present to heal the, the religious people of that time. Yeah, absolutely. He was there for them. Absolutely. Jesus also came for people that have a problem with their temper. Ah, uh, you don't know anybody <laughs> like that, do you? James and John. Jesus came for James and John. <clears throat> they were called the sons of thunder. So they were hot tempered. They lost their temper easily. They were angry. But Jesus came for them too. Absolutely. Uh, I've never I've never had a I've never been a little hot tempered, have I? <laughs> Hardly ever. Hardly right? <laughs> ever. Hardly ever. But, you know, I, my bark is far worse than my bite, yeah, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, that's right. So anyway, hey, but hey, there's a lot of people, you know, we joke about it, but there's a lot of people that have problems with temper. Mm -hmm. They really, really do. They really struggle with that. And, uh, and, and you know what? Jesus came for you if you that's have right. trouble with your temper. And he can help you control that temper. That's he right. He really can. He really, really can. Jesus also came for people who say and do the things that they should not be saying and doing. Like Peter, he said a lot of things he shouldn't have said, and Jesus came for him. Absolutely. And have I ever said anything or done anything I shouldn't have done? Yes, and me too. <laughs> no, you never me have. Too. <laughs> you never have. But I sure have. And so it's good to know that when we blunder, you know, that the Lord still loves us. That's you know? right. And, uh, and doubters. He came for, for doubters. I think about Thomas, you know, and uh, doubting Thomas. But he was the first one after Jesus' resurrection to declare the Lord as my Lord and my God, you know. So, but but the Lord, if you're out, there's a lot of people trouble uh, have trouble with doubt. You yes. know, doubts. You know, I heard a good statement on this one time, Diane. It really helped me that you can have uh, a doubt in your head, but faith in your heart. That's right. And that really helped me because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you get you get doubts running through your head and and you think you feel badly about yourself, right. but you know you can have doubt in your head, but faith in your heart. That's right. And if you'll, but if you'll center in on that faith, that faith will overtake your thoughts, and then you'll get faith in your head too. That's right. But the good news is, if if you're out there today and you're you're listening to this and you have trouble with doubts, you're doubting whatever you might be doubting. I want to tell you this: the Lord came for you. That's he right. He really, really did. And and He came for doubters. He came for betrayers. You know, mm -hmm. remember when Judas betrayed Jesus yes. and what did Jesus call him? He called him friend. friend, called him yeah. friend. And so, uh, you know, if you've been betrayed, if you've been betrayed, Jesus came for you, but maybe you've betrayed somebody else. Mm -hmm. Hey, repent and apologize and go make it right. But just know this, that the Lord came for you too. He came for, he came for hot tempered people. He came for people who said, did things they shouldn't have done. He came for doubters he came for betrayers yes he also came for the sick and the demon possessed in matthew verse uh, chapter 8 verse 16 it says when evening had come they brought to him many who were demon possessed and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by isaiah the prophet saying he himself took our infirmities and bore our sickness so Jesus came, if you're sick or demon-possessed or demon-oppressed, Jesus came for you. He came for you to help you. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, Jesus is a healer. Yes. And he, he's there to heal you. If you need healing, he'll heal you. And if you're if you're having problems with the devil and demons, he'll he can set Jesus can set you free. I think about the maniac of Gadara. Mm -hmm. I mean that guy had what about two thousand demons in him, mm -hmm. and Jesus set him free. Yes. And 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 then I think about Mary Magdalene. Mm -hmm. You know she had she she was the first one to preach the gospel mm -hmm. after Jesus was raised from the dead, 
And, uh, and, and, but you know what? She was demon possessed mm -hmm. and Jesus set her free. Yes. You know? And, and boy, she loved him, didn't yes. I mean, she, she sure she did. did. But, but, you know, I tell you what, you get set free from demons. I mean, you'll, you'll love Jesus too. I yes. mean, you will. And so she, uh, she was set free. So, uh, Jesus came for the, for the sick and the demon, the demon possessed. He yes. really, really did. Jesus also came for those who are shunned by society. You know, in every society, unfortunately, there's people that are looked down upon. And that was the case when Jesus was here on the earth. And Jesus loved people like the lepers who were shunned by society. They were looking, looked down on. They were ostracized. But Jesus loved them and reached out to them and healed them. Uh, Jesus also loved people of all sizes and shapes and people with that were short and tall and big and small. And uh, like Zacchaeus, he was... Uh, Somewhat smaller than than the average man, I suppose. He had to that climb up. That was a nice way to say that. You're not going to say he was short. <laughs> had to climb up in a tree to see Jesus, and Jesus loved him. Called him out. Went to went to his house to eat. So Jesus loves you, no matter what size you are, what shape, what color your hair, what you size. You didn't have your, to bring up hair. <laughs> what size your nose is? What size your eyes are? What color your eyes are? You know, it doesn't matter what what's going on with your body. Jesus loves you. Absolutely. He even came for people without much <laughs> hair or any hair. So that's good to know. Young, old, Jesus came for children. You know, back in that day, children were also looked down on. Um, they were not uh, deemed as important to have around Jesus, but Jesus wanted them around and Jesus wanted to love on them and, and minister to them. You know, Jesus was an exciting person is an exciting person mm -hmm. you know how i know that because the kids wanted to get yes. around him and then the disciples tried to keep him away and he said hey allow the little kids to come over here right he says for of such is the kingdom of heaven so yeah and not only did he come for uh, those shunned by society but he came for you know he jesus came for all ethnic groups mm -hmm. absolutely he came he ministered jesus was a jew he ministered to the jews yes but he also he ministered to the gentiles mm -hmm. and he ministered you know well the samaritans right and, and and he just, he ministered to everybody. With, he, the Bible says that he is no respecter of persons. Right. And so he ministers to everyone equally. He loves everybody equally. Yes, he, he absolutely does. does. Jesus also loves the people that are sexually immoral. In the New Testament, it talks about uh, a woman taken in adultery, and the religious people brought her to Jesus and wanted Jesus to condemn her. And Jesus wouldn't do it. He just told her, go and sin no more. And he had love and compassion toward her. Also, um, another example is the woman at the well that Jesus talked to. She had been divorced five times and was living with a man that she wasn't married to. And Jesus didn't condemn her, but he loved her. And so if you're sexually immoral, if you have problems in that area, if you're watching pornography or doing something that you know is wrong sexually, Jesus loves you, and he extends forgiveness to you. Yeah, now he wants you to repent. Yes. I mean, you can't go on in that lifestyle. I mean, you need to repent, and uh, you need to do that. But the point we're trying to make here today is he came for you, he came for you. and he loves you. So, mm -hmm. you know, and there's a lot of people that that are, have, you know, have been divorced, and they think less of themselves. Yes. And of course, divorce is a, is a bad thing, and, and God's not in favor of it. But, you know, if someone's been divorced... And, you know, they've gone on with their lives. You know, the Lord forgives. Right. And this lady that you mentioned, uh, this woman, she was divorced five times. And this was the woman at the well. Right. And uh, she'd been divorced five times and then was married, uh, was living with a man she wasn't married to. You know, Jesus never condoned that sin. No. It's like the woman taken in adultery. He didn't condone the sin. Right. He told her to go and sin no more. But he didn't condemn that woman taken in adultery. Right. He didn't condemn the, the lady that had been divorced. So if you're out there and, and you know, you're feeling bad about yourself, hey, Jesus came for you. And hey, if you've been divorced, I tell you what, don't, I mean, it's it's not a good thing, but hey, Jesus came for you and, 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 and he loves you. You know, I just uh, impressed to the spirit of God to say this, that we didn't have this in our notes, but maybe you're out there today and, and you've had an abortion. And you're feeling bad about yourself. I tell you what, the Lord wants to minister to you right now. He wants me to tell you that your baby, now what you did, you shouldn't have done that, okay? But your baby's with the Lord and he loves you and he came for you, okay? And there's hope. 
okay? And there's there's life for you beyond that. Now, now we didn't have that in our notes. I hope it was okay that I shared that, but I believe that's what the Lord wanted to yes. say to somebody that's going to be listening to yes. this. Absolutely. He came for you and he loves you. That's right. Amen. And uh, who's next? Warriors. Oh, it's my turn. <laughs> We've got these color-coded, so i gotta got to be sure it's it. She does the black lettering, I do the blue, so in case you're wondering. Blues so, for is boys. Is it my turn now, yeah. blues yeah. for boys? But warriors, he came for warriors. I wonder if there's any warriors out there. You've never known me to worry, have you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get her to say something bad about me, but she won't do it. But you know, worrying, yeah, there's a lot of people that are bound by worry and yes. anxiety. And the Bible says, you know, we're not supposed to be anxious for anything. And but you know, that that's easier said than done. Yes. Now it's doable. But I tell you what, uh, I came I come from a long line of warriors. My grandma was a world champion, and my mother doubled down on that, and it got into me. And and so, uh, and, and you know, worrying is like what did somebody say? Worrying is like paying interest on a loan you may never have to borrow. Yeah, that's right. And I tell you what, people can get bound by worry, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, but but you know, Jesus came for warriors. And, you know, worrying never has done me any good. No. Nope. Absolutely. And, and most of the stuff I've worried about never happened anyway. That's right. So, hey, uh, Jesus came for warriors, and, and he came to set us free. Praise That's God. Right. So let's trust him and stop worrying. But he That's came for good. He came for us. He And then I think about that woman with the issue of blood, you know, and Jesus healed her and all. But the point there is, is she had, she had an issue of blood. You know, there's people out there with all kinds of issues. Yes. And things that we're not even bringing up here. There may be some things we miss here that, that doesn't fit what, what you're dealing with, mm -hmm. but this one does. Yes. Whatever issue it is that you're dealing with, like that woman with the issue of blood, you know, she bled for 12 years. That's a long time to yes. bleed. And that's terrible. That's a terrible thing. But Jesus set her free. Mm -hmm. And it, now it was her faith. She came to him. You need to come to the Lord in faith. But he came for her, yes. and uh, she uh, he he set her free. So whatever your issue is, whatever it is, I tell you what, if you'll just reach out and touch Jesus in faith, he'll set you free and heal you just like he did that woman with that issue of blood. Yes, that's right. Jesus also came for the self-righteous, people who think that they're uh, good enough in, in and of themselves uh, to obtain heaven, people who are bound up by religious rules and regulations, uh, one example of that is the Pharisees. Even though they were constantly against Jesus and trying to find fault with him, uh, Jesus came for them and loved them. Uh, also, the rich young ruler is another example of a self-righteous person that, that Jesus came for, but he, he felt like he was righteous in his own right, that he didn't need a Savior. Well, he thought that he had kept all those commandments. Yep. And, and when Jesus got done ministering to him, because Jesus loved him, the mm -hmm. Bible said, but he, that young man thought he had kept all those commandments, mm -hmm. and Jesus really pointed out to him that he hadn't even kept the first one. Right. That he, his money was more important to him than God. And right. the first commandment is, is that we're supposed to keep God first. That's right. But he thought he could obtain salvation through all those good works. Hey, you can't obtain salvation through good works. Right. It's through faith in Christ. That's and good right. works are good. Good works are good, aren't they? But they won't save you. It's through faith in Christ. But Jesus came for the self-righteous, didn't right. he? Like the Pharisees, the rich young ruler. Mm -hmm. And then who's that next one? I guess one? The, the biggest example of that is Saul, who became Paul. He was definitely self-righteous. He was uh, followed every part of the law to the to the. 10th degree, 9th degree, whatever it's called. He, he followed everything. He did everything just perfectly, he thought. Um, but Jesus came for him. Absolutely. <laughs> he was so bad that he was killing people and persecuting people and imprisoning people, men, women, and children. And Jesus came for him. Jesus came for him and, and called him into the ministry. So if, if Jesus came for... Saul, who was doing all those horrible, horrible things, including kill, having people killed, um, Jesus came for you also. Absolutely. I mean, Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, who we're talking about, he made a statement that, I mean, it, putting it in my own words, like he, he said, I've kept all the rules and regulations right down to the last, mm -hmm. last, last period. Yes. But then he realized that he couldn't save himself. Right. He needed to trust in Jesus, and Jesus came for him. Yes. And ministered to him and changed him from a murderer, from a self-righteous murdering uh, persecutor of the church, 
to one of the greatest apostles, and God used him to write almost, uh, well, over half the New Testament. Yes, isn't so, that awesome? So like Diane said, if, if, if God can do that with, with Saul, who became Paul, he can do that for you, right? That's right. Absolutely. That's right. And then, uh, uh, and, and, and you know, we've we talked about a bunch of groups of people here, but you know what? Uh, Jesus came for sinners. Jesus came for and, sinners. And, you know, that, that, gets all, that gets all of us, doesn't it? And, yes. you know, we were talking about Paul, but he said this in 1 Timothy 1.15. He said, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Yeah. And so if Jesus came for the chief sinner, mm -hmm. then, you know, that, then, then, then he came for you, then for he you. Came for, he came for you, me, he came for you, he came for all of us. Yes. He really did. And, you know, I think about the words Jesus uh, said in John 3, that John, the third chapter, some of the most famous verses mm -hmm. in the Bible. He said, for God so loved the world. In fact, I taught him this a couple of weeks ago. Yes. If you missed that, you ought to go to our, our, ugh, ought to archives. Go to our archives and get that. <laughs> But for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That So he loved the world. That's everybody. Yes. That he gave his only begotten son that whoever, that's everybody, yes. believes in him. That's from your heart now. Not just believing from your head, but from your heart. Not mental assent, but believing from your heart. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now listen to this. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Mm -hmm. You know... Uh, that's what I guess I'd want everybody to know about God mm -hmm. is that he did, he's not a condemner and right. a beat you over the head kind of a God. Mm -hmm. He sent Jesus into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world, that's everybody through Jesus might be saved. saved. And that, yes. I mean, isn't that good? Yes, it that's is. So, isn't that wouldn't you want everybody to know that about God? I would want everybody to know that about God. Not everybody knows that about yes. God. A lot of people think God is mean and angry mm -hmm. and going to beat them over the head. But God is love. And, and he. I'm going to read it again. He didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be, be saved. saved. Glory yes. to God. Jesus came for everyone, for me, and he came for you too. In John uh, 6, 37, it says, Those who come to me, I will... Uh, by no means cast out. So if you come to Jesus, no matter what you've done, no matter what you've thought, no matter what has gone on in your life, he will not uh, deny you. He will not cast you out. He'll not throw you out of the way. He will accept you. And the way that we do that is that, that we repent of our sins. Uh, we're sorry for our sins and we want, we want to change our lives. And we accept Jesus. We take Jesus as our Savior to wash away all of our sins and make us new creations and to make him the Lord of our life, meaning our master, the one that we turn to, the one that we follow, uh, his words we follow. And we do that and, and God wipes away all those sins, wipes away all those impurities and makes you new. And that's what God wants to do for you through Jesus Christ. Absolutely. So like I always say when we conclude these, the Bible says whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus will be saved. So if you'll do what Diane said, repent of your sins and, and from your heart, call on the name of the Lord Jesus, knowing that he came for you, he came for everyone, but you call on his name in faith and he'll save you. You'll miss hell, you'll make heaven, and he will make your life worth living in the meantime. Hey, thanks for doing this with me. And thanks for having me. I got to do this with the prettiest girl in the whole world. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks, honey. I love you. I love you, too. I really do. And we'd like to wish you all a happy new year. Yeah. Happy, I was going to say Merry Christmas, but so we're still in the season, though. Yep. So Merry Christmas and happy, hey, new, happy year. new Year. God bless you. And have a great rest of the day. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.